And your freshman of the week in the SEC, Arkansas linebacker Dre Greenlaw. Greenlaw had a career-best 16 tackles in the win over Auburn. 12 of those 16 came in the second half and in overtime. Greenlaw, 16 tackles, tied for the most by any freshman nationwide this season and tied for the second most tackles by any SEC player in any game this year. Saw the rest of the way. They got to get three out of five. Take us through them. I feel pretty good about the Tennessee <laughs> Martin. Two more. All right. I, I feel really good about Missouri in the final week of the season. One more. I think they're hosting Mississippi State. I think they get that win. You do? I do. All right. Now, so there's their six. Now, do they get beyond six? very interesting games. I think they can beat Ole Miss. I you think they played for that? them last year. I think they played them really tough. I think they will. I think they will beat Ole Miss. And I think that they fall to LSU. But that's going to be one of okay. the best games of the year right there in Baton Rouge on 11-14. Honestly, LSU coming off what could be a loss to Alabama or a big emotional win against Alabama, coming back rallying against a physical football team like yeah. Arkansas, that's tough sledding. So that's going to be a really intriguing game. I just like LSU's personnel just a little bit better at this point. But Arkansas, I expect to finish strong, just like they did last year, because yeah. that physical, brutal running attack, it wears you down in November when your bodies are a little bit tired. All of a sudden, people enter the offseason feeling pretty good about a five out of six stretch. The way it things. started, they'll take seven and five, Darn. No doubt. Remember some <laughs> bad news, though, coming down Monday about uh, Raleigh Williams, another running back down for Arkansas. He'll miss the rest of the year after suffering a neck injury on Saturday. The impact certainly felt by head coach Brett Bielema. The only significant injury of out of Saturday was 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 obviously Raleigh. Um, uh, just an update there. He did get dis, dis, discharged from the hospital today. I talked to his dad about 7 a.m. this morning. Uh, everybody was very upbeat. Um, Raleigh had just gotten out of the shower. Had uh, learned to put the neck brace that he'll be in for a while. Um, uh, he'd put it on and take it off himself. So, a lot of things that are going to be updated uh, very very. Uh, often, I think, over the next couple of months, unfortunately, this is a season-ending injury uh, that uh, will, will cause him to miss the rest of this year. And uh, my hat goes off. I, I, uh, I had a moment down there for me um, just because you, you, you see, see a kid's eyes, and, and his eyes were, were not good. Um, you could tell it was different. So um, the people that handled that situation, um, for that 20 minutes, you, you took a situation that could have been uh, significantly worse than it was to a kid that maybe actually would be able to play play again someday, let alone um, uh, do all the things that he's going to be able to do. So uh, hats off to them uh, and all the people involved. And, you know, I thought the game was going to be over uh, when when I thought we hit the ball, you know, and they, they ruled it in, uh, a fumble. We recovered it. I thought it was going to be done right there. They flipped it back and, and obviously overturned it on replay. Um, and then, you know, you, you, you feel good about the situation not having any timeouts uh, and, and then able to uh, get down in a field goal position and, and to get the score. So you now you got to win it all over again. They score. Uh, you get a little bit concerned, but our defense re or our offense responded very, very well. And I think the way our offense and our defense played the last couple series of that game, like you said, could be very, very uh, – very, very positive for the future. I mean, they, they, they definitely have a nice, nice, confident feeling about what they can do in those situations now. What a Saturday. In regulation, Brandon Allen was 12 for 21 passing the football against Auburn. Then in overtime, he was 7 for 10. Threw for a couple of touchdowns and a couple more two-point conversions. They got the win. It pushed Arkansas to 3-4 and four on the season with a chance to even up their record with a home game Saturday against UT Martin. This was the eighth game in conference history that needed at least four overtimes to get a winner. Arkansas has been involved in half of those. They're three and one in them. Let's go to Fayetteville, Arkansas now. Bring in the quarterback of the Razorbacks, Brandon Allen, joining us here. Uh, Brandon, your game over yet? Yeah, yeah, finally. Okay. It just ended. <laughs> All right, good. Four overtimes. How do you begin to describe the roller coaster ride you must have been on? You know, it's it's tough. You know, it was a, it was a well fought game on both sides. You know, the whole game, and um, you know, right when we thought, you know, we had it won there late in the, late in the fourth. You know, they they had a, a really good drive, got back and, and hit a field goal to tie it up, and um, you know, from there on, you know, you just, you keep scoring as an offense of uh, a, a guy, offensive mindset. You keep scoring and and you score as many points as you can to to help your defense out, knowing that you know there's nothing the other team can do to to beat you as long as you, you score the maximum amount of points in those overtimes. Brandon, I'm not one who thrives under pressure, but that's why overtime would kill me. I, I couldn't do that. The other team scores, they get seven, you've got to go get seven, yet time and time again you guys did it. I want to go in a couple of situations here individually. In overtime, 
you get to fourth down, you know that they've got, you've got to get seven here. You find Drew Morgan for a touchdown. Take us through that. Yeah. Um, you know, we kind of knew a, a tendency they had when we get in that part of the, the field. And, you know, we called up a play, a, a kind of a double post with a snag play. And uh, it was a great play call, Drew. I told Drew in the huddle, I said, look, you're my first read. Uh, go win and get open, and I'm going to hit you because I'm going to bring in a lot of people that we can't pick up. And uh, so I need you to go win and get in the end zone score for us. And he did a great job of, uh, of, of getting separation, let, give me a spot to, to put the ball. And, and our, our offensive line and running backs, they held up as long as they could, and uh, it worked out really well. Fair to say he's kind of become the go-to guy. You've had so many injuries at the wide receiver mm -hmm. position. He has exploded, it seems like, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. You know, he, he's really he's really stepped into that leadership role at the at the wide receiver core because of a lot of the injuries we have. Um, you know, he's a guy that we needed to step up, and he and he did right away. He did such a great job in, in his first time starting, and um, has really continued to to improve from there on. And uh, he's got a lot of confidence in himself and his game, and uh, that confidence really translates onto the field and uh, brings a lot of confidence to our offense. All right, let me go to another si uh, series here. Third overtime. They scored and got the two. So now you, you mm -hmm. have to get eight. You score a touchdown uh, on fourth down, no less. But mm -hmm. then you need the two. And you're yeah. rolling, 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 roll. It looks like you're running. The sideline's coming quick, B.A. Take me through that play before you found Jeremy Sprinkle. That one, um, set up a motion, put Drew in motion, try to get him quick in the flat. And um, so he's a kind of a high-low read, flat in a corner. And, and Jeremy uh, Sprinkle just kind of runs a little snag out and then works with me as, as long as I run. So, you know, we've, we've never actually thrown it to Jeremy uh, in that, in, on that play, but it worked out. They, they covered Drew, covered the corner really well, and, and uh, Sprinkle did a great job of, of working with me as I was rolling out and, and using his big body to, to give me a place to throw it, and I just put it on his body and made a great play. I'll tell you what both of our analysts said that night when we kept showing the highlight, uh, Chris Doring and Booger McFarland, they said, that's all Brandon Allen there, just buying time, making that happen. I know you'll probably deflect that, but, but that's what they were saying. So now, finally, you score first in the fourth overtime. Auburn ends up, Ricardo Lewis can't hang out of the football, you win. What's the first emotion you feel? No, just just so happy, you know, overjoyed. You know, we've been, especially in, in, in uh, our tenure here in the past couple of years, we've been in so many tight games, so many close games, and uh, it seems at the end something always happens. We don't we don't come away with the win. So to finally uh, be in a really tight game, really close game, and come up with the win was, you know, really everyone was just so overjoyed and so happy and pumped, and um, you know, just it was a really exciting time. All right, so three and four after seven games last year. You're three and four after seven games this year. Obviously, higher expectations this year coming in. Mm -hmm. How do you compare the three and fours? You know, it's tough. You know, it's it's tough to compare them to last year. I think we're a better team than we were last year. Uh, this year, we we are and. Um, I had, had a rough stretch at the beginning of the year and, and didn't play very well. And I think we're starting to kind of put it together, kind of like last year. We didn't play well at the beginning and, and put it on there at the end. And I think, you know, we, we continue to improve each week. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of guys that are, that are getting healthy again, that are coming back. And, and so I think we have, we have a, a really good team that's going to continue to improve the rest of the season. And then there is, of course, news. Raleigh Williams, running back, uh, is out for the year after having neck surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you, talk, you compare this year to last year. The fan base is hungry, right? They're very excited coming into the year. They're still excited. We saw what happened after the win against Auburn. But for this season, how does the season need to go for you to convince everybody in Arkansas, whether that's something you feel you need to do or not, Brandon, that things are indeed improving? You know, I think if we play like we're capable, um, things will kind of take care of themselves in that area. Uh, obviously, Five more games left. We want to win them all. We we have a chance to win them all. Um, there's there's no team we we believe we can't beat. So we we think we can beat everyone. And um, it's about it's about playing on that Saturday. You know, it's it's tough, especially in our league. But um, you know, it's about who comes to play on that Saturday. And uh, I think we got a lot of guys that are that are excited. I think this win really is going to be. Um, a building block, a lot of momentum moving into the weeks to come, and we just need to string together a few wins and get that momentum going. And uh, we have the players, we have the the, the coaches, the people that, that we need to win, and and it's about putting it together. And I think we can do that. All right, hopefully for you guys, uh, you're able to do that. Brandon Allen, Arkansas quarterback, BA. Congrats on a great win. Uh, go get some rest if uh, if yeah. coach allows it. Thank you.
to look at. The last game you see in the month of September, that would be the Arkansas Razorbacks. So let's roll their 2016 schedule. There it is, Hog fans, and they are the only team in the SEC. Take a look at this right here. At Mississippi State, at Missouri, they end in consecutive road conference games. Greg, when you went and looked at the Hog schedule, what stood out to you? Well, I love, first of all, I love the non-conference against TCU going on the road. I love those yeah. home field non-conference. It gives the players a chance to go on the road. And obviously, Fort Worth, Dallas, huge recruiting hotbed for Arkansas. So that's one they absolutely have to look good in on September 10th. But I really, I think the schedule is really tough once they get through the open date. Obviously, the month of November, much like most of these schools, is going to be very trying on Arkansas. But usually, under Brett Bielema, that's when Arkansas has been playing their best football. Wow. We're feeling good. <laughs> See what a lot of money will get you, boy. <laughs> uh, it is Halloween weekend, of course. We are out to scare top teams in this conference. The question is, you look down the schedule that the top contenders are playing. Who on that schedule should they be most scared of? And we're not talking about teams. We're talking about players on teams, correct? Correct. Let's start it with LSU, fittingly enough, Book. Well, for me, I think the scariest player they have left is Calvin Ridley. I mean, here's a guy who can take the top off of a defense. LSU's defense has given up 16 plays of 20 yards or more. Guess what? Calvin Ridley has six of those himself, an 81-yarder and a 50-yarder. And let's think about his offensive coordinator, Lane Kiffin. He loves to take a shot deep, get the football down the field, which plays in Calvin Ridley's hands. Well, for me, it's Brandon Allen of Arkansas. Arkansas can match the physicality of LSU. They're going to have to get an extra safety down there to run support. And Boog mentioned it. They give up those big plays. Certainly Brandon Allen able to take advantage of opportunities in the passing game. He should have Jared Cornelius back, should have Keon Hatcher back. This is the guy that's the third leading passer in the conference. With those weapons there, certainly could be dangerous for that secondary of LSU. All right, so that's All right next up, middle game on SEC ESPN Network. Arkansas at home against Tennessee Martin. A Hogs coming off that four over time win last week against Auburn. UTM comes in the four and two on the season. Of course, FCS level competition here. So let's go with a bold prediction during starting with the hall or for the hall. All right. I'm going with Cody Walker mm. over 100 yards rushing. All right. Now let me go ahead and give you a little pre justification here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> really think hard about it. is this going to help your case? Uh, I it's going to help my case. <laughs> okay. Because 100 yards rushing doesn't sound like much, right? No, it does. No, right. does not. Cody because Walker, Jonathan Williams and Raleigh Williams are both hurt. He only right. has 60 yards rushing on the entire season, all right? So he's going to almost double his season output. But he's never had a chance to get the carries he's going to have in this game. They're going to try to find who that compliment is to Alec Collins. They're going to run the football a ton tomorrow. They're going to manhandle that front for UT Martin. He's getting – I know what's happening here. I sense what's happening. <laughs> But Cody Walker is going to go over 100, and I can tell that you guys do not think that that's bold. Because enough. you see movement. I see, left I see right it. Here. Listen, listen, there okay. it is. Yeah, I mean, come on. Oh, that's really low, too. It was just so much doubt in your own statement. <laughs> I didn't. I, I never Here's what happened. It. You were good I was with good 100 yards, and he's only had so many 60 yards so far. But the more you talked, the more you trouble that you happens. got into. I, I found that with my wife. So that happens. So. <laughs> he does. I mean, you just kept talking in the and the boy. I mean, it just kept talking going. myself right into it. Exactly, oh, absolutely. Did. All right, I'm glad we got can. out of the way, though. I feel better now. Yeah, well, there's no guarantee of just one. Have we had a double double bowl made up before? Uh, Give us time. Well, <laughs> well, we got it repaired in time for that one, though. They did something last year against uh, LSU and against Ole Miss. They pitched a shutout. Yeah. Since then, they haven't done it. I'm predicting they pitch another shutout mm. this week. Understand this defense. They lost six players who started training camps on NFL rosters. So it's taking this defense time to jail. It's a bend but don't break style. I think they come together this week. They pitch a shutout. Goose egg this week. They won't give up big plays. And if your offense runs the football for that many yards, we'll have plenty of points on the board. I'm sitting over here formulating an argument as to why you should have the bowl meter. They only scored three points against Ole Miss's defense. Why can't they shut them out? I mean, it should seem they're playing against an FCS opponent. Ole Miss's should defense, shut them out. Ole Miss's defense is a hair better than Arkansas, yeah. so this would be a step up for Arkansas's defense. Right. No bowl meter. You're, I, I wish the people, because we were running video at the time when you could see out of the corner of your eyes. I saw you. Where, where we, we could have seen your, if they all could have seen uh, your face as you're trying to deliver your point. Panicking. It was beautiful. It was the biggest thriller in the SEC last weekend. Arkansas going four overtimes with Auburn. Time and time again, converting on plays it had to convert to keep the game alive before getting a 54-46 win in Fayetteville. The win pushes the Hogs to 3-4 and four on the season. 
Yes, the same three and four record Arkansas had through seven games last season. Now, after last week's win, the Hogs find themselves again in the same spot, but it just feels different, doesn't it? Right? Like last year, though, Arkansas is allowing over 26 points a game and averaging 6.4 yards a play. So there are certainly some similarities. As we head now to Fayetteville, Arkansas, site of an, ES, an SEC ESPN Network game, the middle of the day game there. Tennessee Martin visiting the Razorbacks, and Casey Smith will be working that game. So here we are, if we're Arkansas, Casey, four overtimes, an emotional roller coaster type of win. What's the feeling around this program after it? Well, Dari, here in Fayetteville, there is a lot of energy, as you can imagine. And when we talked to Brett Bielema today, he said that not only is there a lot of emotion and energy, that they learned a lot about this team last week during those four overtimes. He said that if the game would have ended in regulation and that there were a lot of opportunities for that to happen, that he wouldn't have had a chance to really learn a lot about his team like he did. He said that in practice this week, there is this air of confidence that they know that they can finish these games and that they really preach perseverance and that they've had some struggles early in the season, but that after that game versus Auburn, they learned that they can close these games out. And what he said, guys, is, is that they're extremely excited for what they've seen. He also said that it has a lot to do with what happened last year. He said he looks at things he calls indicators, great communication, verbal and practice, the guys that are really maturing and the young guys getting that confidence that is so key. And that win against Auburn absolutely did that for the Arkansas Razorbacks. And Casey, maybe we saw the best performance from Brandon Allen, too. 10 for 14 in the fourth quarter in overtime over 100 yards a couple of touchdowns a couple of two-point conversions that were big as well I know you talked to Brandon what did he have to say about it well, before Brandon came in the room, Coach Bielema said that he noticed Brandon and his dad having a very emotional hug that just looked different on the field after the game. And we asked Brandon about that, and he said, look, guys, my dad had a sense of relief about him. He's watched me struggle and us not be able to close out these really close games. And when I said, well, how did you feel? He said it felt the same way. It was a sense of relief that we don't have a curse on us, guys, that we can finish these games out. He said that the confidence of the team was behind him and that in practice he could really feel these guys rally around what they did versus Auburn last week. Now we know about the de uh, the injuries at running back Jonathan Williams and now Raleigh Williams also hurt and out for the year. Cody Walker though had a big game particularly late against Auburn. What are coaches saying about what he gives them and their depth in general going into Saturday's game? Well, Coach Bielema said it flat out that if they didn't have Cody in the lineup, that he's not sure that they would have beat Auburn because death has been such an issue and that Alex Collins has also been banged up. In fact, he's had turf toe for the last few weeks and that they just needed that fresh pair of legs that Cody Walker brought to the field. And he said, look, it's a season where we've had a lot of injuries, but it's the next guy up mentality. And that's really what they saw from Cody, who's been battling his own injuries throughout this season. Another important note is that Alex Collins has been injured throughout the season, but Nike came through clutch for him. They got him his own custom pair of cleats that actually have a better sole for him or more comfortable. But what's really important for him is they look a little bit different than the team. They're smoky gray. The rest of the team wears black. And so Coach Bielema said he's got a little bit of a swag about him this week. But the depth issue across the board has been an issue for this team. But the running backs have stepped up when they need to and that they're really excited to see what Cody Walker can do on Saturday. It is the second game of the day. Arkansas hosting Tennessee Martin. Four Eastern. Three in beautiful Northwest Arkansas. Razorback Stadium. Arkansas hosting Tennessee Martin at 4 Eastern, 3 Central. Arkansas needs to win three of its remaining five games to make a bowl. Casey Smith with Big Brett. Coach, a four overtime win last week versus Auburn. What did you learn about your team last week and throughout this week in practice? Well, I think last week in particular, uh, we had some guys that stepped up that hadn't done it before. So anytime you get young players to step forward, uh, especially in critical moments, uh, obviously B.A., our quarterback, played well, but Cody Walker, Drew Morgan on defense, Josh Lydell, uh, some guys stepped up, and hopefully that continues. You talk about Brandon Allen. How have you seen him develop as a quarterback, both on and off the field through the season? You know, I think he's taken uh, the approach that it's his senior year. He knows this is the last rodeo, but um, he's learned how to disperse the ball. Because of injuries, he's had to go to a lot of different guys, and I think that's ended up helping him grow. Um, he's not going to his regulars. He's kind of had to uh, step out of his box and I think play a little bit loose, and I think that's helped him in a big way. 
They want the football, and you see Drake Greenlaw, a linebacker. This is the kind of athlete this guy is. They got him back deep on kickoffs. Yeah, you know, not only can he run down ball carriers, maybe he wants to be a ball carrier himself. The athleticism demonstrated by this true freshman, not only a great tackler, but a guy that thinks he can contribute in the return game. Eric Hawkins, a track star for Arkansas. Also back there deep, he'll be the main one that will chase down the football, but if not, we'll get to see Dre Greenlaw. Here's the kick. And it will be Hawkins, near sideline. Hawkins has unbelievable speed, but tripped up right at the 25-yard line. On second down, they'll do a little play fake, come near side, wide open at the 40, at the 45. There goes Sprinkle. He is pushed out of bounds. On second down and 10. Straight drop for Alley. He'll go to the wide side. Nice little stutter step. Spin to the outside by Cornelius. He'll have the first down. Out of the eye again. Here's Collins. Little dead leg. Gets it to the goal line. Touchdown, Arkansas. Alex Collins from two yards out. Getting it done. Boy, a bunch set to the far side. Looks like a little double pass on the way. Arkansas read it pretty well, and they will pick it off. On the back end by Gaines. And Gaines will take it to the 41-yard line. Sixth of the year. Well, Coach Simpson mentioned that's clearly a lateral, so capable of making the second throw. William Tanner, he needs us to learn to play for another day that time. Just step on out of bounds. You're right there on the boundary. Show some athleticism, even getting this football off. For UT Martin, averaging almost 39 points a game. Delayed handoff, no delay defensively. Big hit coming from Taiwan Johnson. On second down and seven. Out of the shotgun, here's Neal. Over the middle, that one is picked off by Brooks Ellis. Ellis gets a block to the 30 and chased down at the 33-yard line. Fifth-year senior. From right here in Fayetteville, under center. He has Collins in at running back. He'll fake it and throw deep down the field. Looking for Hunter Henry, and what a catch! With 37 yards. Just so dangerous, because they can run that play action. They use tight ends in their formation so much, but they're excellent receivers. And look at the concentration, because it wasn't like it was poor coverage. Walter Evans. UT Martin, 88. Nice play fake. Allen over the middle. There's an open target right around the seven yard line. That is a little toss sweep. Here comes Collins to the end zone. Touchdown from six yards out. That's not a bad place to start. He and Chris Jones both escorting Alex Collins virtually untouched into the end zone. It's UT Martin. The first one was from two yards out. This one from six. He now has nine rushing TDs on the year. Wearing hats, you know. <laughs> fixing the wristbands. <laughs> Here's the return from Landry. And he is stopped well shy of the 10-yard line. Great coverage by Arkansas. Four-man rush. Allen over the middle. Pass is caught by Henry. Makes a man miss, falls forward down to the 11-yard line. Second down and three. Straight handoff, Collins. Breaks a tackle to the end zone. Touchdown, number three for number three. Wow. Yes, we got uh, some diversity. <laughs> yes, we do. 21 to nothing, Arkansas. Put seven on the board. Remember this name, Jamie Bowe. Got some talent in that 24 jersey. The bye week, the Auburn victory. Now you've got time to get him in this game and get him loose from back into the season. Look at the 255 pound Cody Walker dance his way through the hall. Sid Mitchell in motion. Play thing. Allen buying some time. Deep down the middle is Mitchell. Touchdown, Arkansas. 49 yards. What a play action fake. Leading up through the line of scrimmage. And nobody for Damon Mitchell. Some impressive numbers. 10 of 14, 192, and a touchdown right here to Damon Mitchell. The 
Neal's snap. Neal throws. That one is deflected. Worked so far. Three touchdowns on the day. You can get him four. A new career high for Alex Collins. 35-14, but uh, inches away from having that big board change. Both these teams, four sacks allowed by UT Martin. This year, six sacks allowed by Arkansas. Almost seven right there, but deep down the middle, wide open. This will go for a touchdown, Dominic Reed. 71 yards. The deep play threat that Dominic Reed brings. Good job by Brandon Allen, even getting enough on this football because he really couldn't follow through on that throw. It looked like Kevin Prather was right there as he released the football. Using that great speed here. How about the throw, though, from Allen on the short arm? Tight spiral. It's Dominic Reed, 71 yards. Call sweep. Collins cuts it back. Alex Collins. Still on his feet. Stumbles at the 25-yard line. Just said, you know what? We're just going to throw him in there. We're going to get him ready for next next season. Here's a guy ready for right now. Cody Walker. Let's see if they maybe go through the air. Out of the eye. Allen. He'll run it in easily. Untouched. Three yards out. Now has 100 yards in five of his last six contests. And we'll add to that total here. Can anybody chase him down? He's to the 20, down to the 10. Touchdown, Arkansas. 63 yards for Mr. Collins, and that is touchdown number five. Guy's got a bad toe. There are podiatrists all over the country right now going, well, I gotta get a hold of some of these shoes. Either that or get rid of them. I'll be out of business. 56-21, our score here as we begin the fourth quarter. This Arkansas team, it has been a roller coaster ride. You wondered how they would perform today. Ray is knocked down at the 30-yard line. So Austin Allen checks into the game. It's first pass down to Sprinkle. Touchdown, Arkansas. Welcome to the game, Austin Allen. 35 yards. Sprinkle such a big target, and he's shown that athleticism, and it looks to me like they got it right down there on the field. Touchdown. The sophomore, the younger brother of Brandon, his first pass, I would say, was highly successful. And here is that touchdown to Axe Line. 63-28, our score, 2.42 to play. goes Juwan Day. He'll pick up nine. And that will do it. Arkansas puts up 63 points after 54 a week ago. And they will beat Tennessee Martin. 63-28 today. Brett Bielema's club will even up their record at 4-4. Four and four. Coach Bielema will stretch his Arkansas record to 14 and 19. UT Martin, though, certainly will be a factor in the OVC. A lot of big games coming up. Trying to make the FCS playoffs for the first time since 2006.